Hello, my fellow terrestrials. Coming to you from an RV deep in the Carolina mountains, welcome to the What If They're Wrong podcast, the podcast that wants you to question everything. Your reality is about to be shattered. Hello, my fellow terrestrials, and welcome back. Thank you for tuning in. We're going to get to this thought-provoking episode with Greg and Ash from Pursuit of the Paranormal in just a moment. But first, if you enjoy the content and enjoy the show, make sure to subscribe or add it to your list. So that way you get every episode that comes out when it comes out. You'll be able to listen to it right away. You can also contact me if you'd like to be a guest on the show or would just like to talk with me at www.whatifpod.com. Hit up the contact page. I respond to all emails in a timely manner. So let's get with Greg and Ash, the pursuit of the paranormal, and talk about everything paranormal. And remember, question everything. Hello, and welcome to the What If They're Wrong podcast. I'm your host, Jeremiah. I'm joined today by two of my favorites, Greg and Ash. And we're going to be talking about all kinds of fringe topics, and uh, we're going to get really into some stuff, and it'll be a fun hour, so I'll introduce them now. Hello, Greg and Ash. Hello. Hello. Nice to speak to you again. Nice traveling yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's been a long time. So. It has. <laughs> it has. I know you, you've been on our podcast, and we chat regularly on Messenger or Instagram or uh, socials anyway. Oh, yeah. So. Definitely. Um, just for my audience, these guys have really helped me a lot in my podcasting journey and, uh, I wouldn't be where I'm at now without them. So I'm honored to have you guys on and they've got what the number two ranked paranormal podcast. Over to us. Yeah, Yeah, it was a couple of us. Yeah. (laughs) We were like, we were like 10th and then we went third and we went second. Yeah. In the paranormality. Uh, magazine podcast yeah. charts so that's uh, pretty cool just to be up there with some of the big sort of podcast names that's pretty awesome and thanks for obviously having us on and you've been doing a great job yeah, yourself yeah. so kudos to yeah, you definitely yeah my show's been really uh taken off and it's uh fun to see and i'm starting to get messages from audience members and uh i just love hearing from people and whether they want to be on the show or just talk it's uh good to get some recognition and <laughs> know that people are enjoying the content yeah definitely I, I listen to the the podcast as well i um when i'm out and about I, I have a listen so i check in regularly i've listened to to quite a few of them recently as well and i was listening to one um i can't remember the guy you were speaking to uh, and he was talking um about um ufos paranormal cryptids all being um interdimensional and they, they, you were talking about his thoughts on that um and that really stuck it struck a chord uh with me and me and ash have discussed it um, we we speak to podcast people all the time and in guests and, and that seems to be sort of the route a lot of people are going down as an explanation um for sort of the missing link between everything and what it could be so yeah, so was cool. definitely. Uh, just me personally, it makes more sense uh, to look at it that way. Now, that's not to discount that they might be from other planets, but they use interdimensional travel. So I'm open to that theory as well. Yeah. But um, I just, I don't know. I feel there's a, there's definitely some type of way they can phase in and out of what we can perceive. So it is called the... Um... The, the, that's kind of the the thought process we've had and the guests have had on our podcast and also the kind of conversations you're having. I also liked an episode that you did and you interviewed a lady um, who had some harrowing sort of abduction experiences and her daughter was starting to have them as well. Uh, and mm-hmm. it was all a bit dark <laughs> for them. But um, yeah. yeah, fascinating. So you've yeah, had some really good guests on. Yeah. yeah, definitely. 
definitely anytime anybody sort of opens up about experiences like that it's not necessarily an easy subject for them to talk about um and that's what we enjoy on when we're recording our podcast that you get people on that are not necessarily comfortable sharing it within their peer group publicly but yeah. the, the the podcast like ours like yours gives people a bit of a almost like an anonymous forum that they can go on to uh, and reach like-minded people so that's that that's cool that's cool and a lot of time it's the first time they've spoken to anybody about it and they just sort of like this you can see the relief in the face where they've actually like i've actually told someone and they're not gonna think i'm crazy for saying it so it's good to have to give that platform to people it's an honor for us to allow people to do that it's some people need it because they don't know anybody and don't have anywhere else to turn and they come to us which is just an honor really and i apologize i'm so rude uh i forgot to say that you're from the pursuit of the paranormal podcast yes we um, are. totally <laughs> right. glossed over that <laughs> oh, don't worry about that we were keen just to get in and get chatting <laughs> yeah we're not here to self well, that's no right. definitely not we're we're here to uh yeah have a chat to like-minded people like yourself <laughs> So, um, through your podcast, uh, what's been some of your like favorite topics to cover and favorite like stories that you can recall? Wow. I know you've been doing it a while, but yeah. So we regularly talk to people about all sorts of different things. So we've recently talked to somebody uh, about time slips. Um, we talked to somebody, which was really interesting. And there's something that we've touched on a couple of times where people sort of all of a sudden are like in a tif- different sort of era. They could have gone back like 50 years or just by walking through a door. It blows my mind how you could just sort of open a door and just be somewhere, some time else, um, which is odd. But I think for me, the times when we're, we're talking... Um, to guests about it we've had a guy a guy called Michael that reached out to us and the whole thing was completely weird we had um you know when you send an email to somebody and you spell it wrong or whatever and it says this you get a like a Microsoft thing back and says you can't this email can't be reached we actually had that from our email on an email he'd sent to us saying that the email couldn't be sent to us it's very strange, <laughs> but I had the message in, so I contacted the guy back, and we, we went backwards and forwards for a little bit, and then we got him on. We talked to him twice about some like nightly abductions he's having from from aliens or entities. Uh, we went through his life of paranormal into the entity stuff. A friend requested both me and Ash on Facebook, like we like we all do. We all sort of like touch base with each other. Um, then all of a sudden, he's not doesn't appear to be on Facebook anymore. I've not been able to get hold of him at all. It's sort of like he's just completely vanished again. He sort of came in weirdly and then left weirdly. So he's been one of our favourite ones because, like we're doing now, and the people on the podcast. They, when they're listening to this podcast, we, we're actually having a face-to-face conversation on, on like a Skype type program. So um, you can see people's reactions and you can see a lot of the time whether or not somebody seems to be pulling the wool over your eyes that we say in the UK or, or lying or whatever. Mm. Um, and this guy just looked completely genuine. There was times when it went really dark and he was talking about the mental darkness he's faced as part of his journey with these these creatures. Um, and that, that doesn't necessarily come across in the audio. So that that's the that was probably one of my most favourite ones, just purely from the fact that the way it all came about and mysteriously sort of vanished afterwards. But about you, Ash? Well, I was just looking through our episode list then just to sort of try and recap because we have been, been doing this for getting close to two years and over about 150 episodes. So just, it's been a lot and it's quite hard to think sort of a favourite. But one that sort of stuck with me, one of our earlier ones, when we spoke to John Edmonds of Stardust Ranch. Oh, yeah. 
No, that's something that Greg had sort of followed the story for years, been trying to get a hold of him for a long time, and we finally got a hold of him. And his whole story of Stardust Ranch was similar to Skinwalker Ranch, but in Arizona. And he's had, like, strange creatures on the property. Uh, he gets attacked by grey aliens, which he kills with a samurai sword. He's, he tries to stop his wife from being abducted uh, on a regular basis, and there's other sort of paranormal activity going on, all on his ranch. And just to talk to him about his experiences that have been going on for, what, it's like 20-odd mm-hmm. years on the ranch, yeah. and he'd never changed his story. He's never been to, like, try and get fame or anything from it. It's just, this is his story. And that's so, and that was one of our first episodes, well, probably in the first couple of months. Yeah. And that's the sort of one that we go back to quite a lot just because of the, who the guest was and the whole story. And that's sort of when that sort of stuck through me. Aside from that one, is we've had quite a lot of mediums on his guests and that's something that as sort of more UFO guy I hadn't really thought any sort of history with that side of the paranormal and then because we had quite a lot of different mediums on and different types of medium ships and different experiences just hearing all the different sort of gifts that they have been able to contact others and the messages and that, that they give that's just been sort of eye opening just to hear all the different types of mediumship that's been going on so probably that's my favourite type of episodes at, at the minute really yeah it's um it's fun to go down different paths and the good thing about paranormal is it encompasses so much that yeah you're not stuck to one specific topic there's so much stuff out there and so many different people that experience different things and <laughs> so what's your guys take on because it's my favorite thing is uh what's your guys take on the whole like alien UFO abduction phenomenon. I know we touched on it a little bit, but it's. I mean, it's hard to know because there's so many stories and so many experiences, and a lot of them are similar. And it's it's hard to ignore the fact that so many people are having these experiences. And in some cases, there is evidence in terms of like time missing and marks on the bodies and even implants in some cases and people have, people just like wipe it off and say now nah, it's, it's so bullshit so made up but you can't ignore just a multitude of cases from all around the world like there's some famous cases in the UK in the US all over the world and this I mean something to it I mean I like I can't I kind of do like the sort of the X-Files the way they did it where it was, it was the government sort of pretending to be something else and taking them which could be which could be what's happening here um, but I mean it's fascinating I mean abduction is one that I've um, sort of looked into quite a lot as part of my UFO work and we've done a few like articles on different abductions and sort of the lesser known sort of abduction cases and there's a lot that have a lot of evidence to go with them like there's one case in Australia where there's long story short there was a family a couple and they had a friend staying over and the the, the female friend heard the, the female of the couple screaming and shouting for help she runs into the room and she sees her basically in a beam of light and she disappears and then so she wakes the husband up they call the police they come out they search the land on this sort of property can't find anything they get a random phone call like a couple of hours later and it's from the female and she's like 500 miles away at a petrol station. She had just been dumped like at the side of the road, managed to walk to find a petrol station. They had called the police in that part of Australia where she was now, who confirmed that like, she was with him, they're with her, and she is in this place, this place 500 miles away. But there's no way she could have got from that building to 500 miles away in that space of time. And again, there was some sort of physical evidence at the property as well so it's just one of the cases where not many people heard of it but she was like it's fact that she was there and then she was only 500 miles away in the space of a couple of hours later there's no way she could have got in a car and traveled that distance so it's just a really that's just a really interesting case that i love How about you greg what's your abduction so like you say there's so many like people and accounts of it happening and you've got like the famous ones um 
we've got Travis Walton. Um, we've also spoke to a guy called Philip Kinsella, who had his own experience in his house when he was younger, and he even refused to to talk about some of the experience because of the nature of what they did to him. Um, and I don't know. I don't know. It. Why not? I think if if we're open to think that we're being visited by whatever, then why wouldn't they be? I know you'd put up a post on your Facebook about uh, with a picture of somebody being sort of drawn up beamed into up. a beamed <laughs> up, yeah, and you're asking about uh, like what what do you think it is? And I put down um, it's po- possibly a future us coming back. They're doing tests on us to find out what went wrong to get get to whatever it is in the future. So that maybe that's a, a thought on it. It's definitely some kind of experiment of some kind of sample taking appears to go on. Like you said, Ash, people have got marks. Some people say they experience being like on a operating table and they can see these creatures um, over them. And it's... I don't know. Uh, if I'm open to believe everything else that I I like to to look at and we read into and, and we discuss on the podcast, why wouldn't I think that abductions take place? And I, I think I've heard enough stories from people in their experiences that something's definitely happening to these people. What is? Who knows? I don't think you'll ever know unless you're, it happens to you. Um but it doesn't seem impossible if if we're being visited by whoever. Yeah, I actually saw a um, program. I can't remember what it was. It was on TV, but um, and it showed like a computer generated like graphic, I guess, of like what people would look like if like evolution kept happening with like us staring at screens all the time our eyes would get bigger and uh we would start eating less so our mouths would get smaller and it ended up turning into like what you would think is a classical gray so that was really interesting and ties into your theory of them possibly being from the future and coming back and maybe that's why they're so secretive too is they can't really be known Mm-hmm. So was it, it was wasn't it a famous astronaut on UK TV not long ago talked about future humans? Was it we were discussing it? Ash? Yeah, Tim Tim Peak mentioned Tim it Peake. on morning television about like cause he's he's an astronaut and he's become a bit of a celebrity in the UK being like one of our astronauts going to the space station. So he's quite high profile. And like the morning TV show he's on is like watched by millions. And they were just talking about one of the recent developments in the US and they talking to him about it. He was talking about like the different theories about. He mentioned interdimensional. It could be that. He mentioned it could be future humans, and it was talked like in a serious manner. It wasn't like jokingly. He was saying like, "I believe it could be this." This is from like coming from an actual like astronaut that's well respected. So it's just cool to hear him talking about it in like that way. It was pretty good. All right, so we'll what you meant, what you, yeah, go ahead. So I was going to say what 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 you mentioned then about um, the future humans and the way that we evolve. I was listening to an anthropologist a while ago, and he was talking about how we sort of became how we appear now, and it's and how we became sort of intelligent, and it's because we stood up. It's like we're the only like creature on Earth that stood up, and then because we stood up on two legs, the gap at the back of our heads widened. And that allowed our brain to grow bigger and that allowed us to gain more intelligence and as we evolved our brains became bigger and then obviously we evolved into homo sapiens now and obviously very intelligent species but because we stand up we get a lot of back problems as a species but that's the like genetic sort of evolution is going to give you a bad back back problems because you're standing up on two feet rather than four but the plus side is you have the bigger brain and you're able to evolve and survive because you have big intelligence so you fold that forward like you say the head getting bigger like sort of the grey alien typical grey alien got sort of the big heads because they have a bigger brain so it's just again further down the evolutional trait is the bigger head with the bigger brain the bigger eyes from the screens so it just sort of tie in 
with that. And if we, if we hadn't stood up like a million millions of years ago, it'd have still been and like something crawling on all fours like the rest of the creatures are. They are. So it's a sort of it does tie into that. They're also um, evolution is happening to humans as we speak as well, because children are now being born without wisdom teeth, because there's no oh, need for it. Yeah. So they they reckon children's faces the shape of children's faces is going to change over the years because we're all born with wisdom teeth already and they just sort of move and whatnot over the years but children are now being born without them because we don't need them it is wild to Uh, think about yeah it's odd completely odd yeah so um i guess that's a good segue into the old bigfoot phenomenon (laughs) So I'm going to have to ask the same thing about that since we're talking about creatures standing up and all. Um, what's your guys' take on the whole Bigfoot phenomenon? What do you what do you think? Do you think they're real? Do you think they're out there? Do you think they're like leftover hominids or are they like interdimensional beings? And then I've heard some things where they like kind of uh, are seen with UFOs and stuff like that. So uh, I'll hear your guys take on that I mean, Greg's got the t-shirt on so I'll let you go first I saw that yeah oh there it goes <laughs> so he's got the Bigfoot oh, and UFO he, t-shirt on. yeah yeah available on our website um <laughs> just a little plug so um at the start of this journey that me and Ash have been on at the start of the podcast um it wasn't something that I really knew much about really put I thought it was more of a like a romantic type of idea that there's this unknown species in the woods blah 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 but the more we we talk about and the more we speak to experts people who've had experiences there definitely seems to be something in it even in the UK um, which we don't have half well a tiny speck of the percentage of wild life um, and wilderness that you guys have over in the States. Um, there's still reports of similar type creatures in the UK. Um, and I think the only way we can explain some of that is interdimensional, alien related, so UFO related. There are hotspots where um, cryptids are spotted um, with UFOs and other kind of experiences at the same time. Ash was talking about Stardust Ranch, similar type thing happened there. Skinwalker Ranch, they've had creatures coming out of portals over the ranch. So I'm more of a believer now than I was right at the start. Yeah, so similar to Greg, like I've always had an interest in the whole Bigfoot thing. Didn't think it could be in the UK, but there's literally hundreds of reports that are from the UK and from some of the places where you think there's no way like there'd be a small park with a bit of woodland and it's surrounded by housing estates yet there's like multiple reports of Bigfoot sightings like how it's like the middle of a housing estate it's surrounded by houses there's no way it could go but if you look at the interdimensional aspect of it you can easily if he's, easy, if he's just coming and going dimension to dimension there's no reason why he can't be in that small park it does explain sort of how the camera scene. I'm actually a member of the Bigfoot Research Team UK. We go out into the, the forest, we set up the equipment, we talk to different people that have had experiences, we take sort of sightings reports. And like similar to the last topic, abduction, there's that many reports independent of each other. Even going back hundreds and thousands of years, similar reports from different parts of the world. Like there has to be something in it. Like we we we've done episodes on Yowie in Australia and some of the like sort of before the Brits came over and sort of the Aboriginals they had folklore and legends going back hundreds and hundreds of years of ape men and like and he would be like sort of they kept away from each other they respected each other's sort of land that was his land they didn't encroach they didn't encroach into the humans land and this case is from like Native American time where they reported seeing a, a moon shape in the sky and monkeys coming out of the moon. So that's like that's how they were describing it was like monkeys coming out of the moon. 
It's when you try and sort of think of how we would interpret that. Is it a craft in the sky and Bigfoot coming out of the craft? That's kind of what they're describing. When they're saying that they saw monkeys coming out of the moon in the sky. like, And there is like, obviously people say that UFOs drop off Bigfoot. It's like a pet or they do they abduct Bigfoot the same as they abduct humans to do experiments and stuff on. So again, that link is just there, always. Whatever sort of avenue you go down, if it's Bigfoot, abduction, UFOs, other cryptids, UFOs are there. There's other aspects of the paranormal, it's always there. It's never sort of isolated cases. It's two, they are all interconnected one way or another. You can't have one without the other, it seems the more we look into it. Mm. And there's a new documentary has just come out. I will just plug them because I know they're... We've, uh, they're coming on I've, my show, yeah. Are they? <laughs> Secrets of the Sasquatch by Dockside Media, Chris and Tyler. Um, awesome guys. But their documentary, um, we really enjoyed that. I, I, I was really... It was a good take on the sort of the Bigfoot Sasquatch sort of phenomena uh, and their the experiences of people they interviewed have had so that's cool so check it out everybody yeah i watched that too and i like how they went different angles mm. like it wasn't just one angle yeah. at it there was multiple because they had sue walker on there again and yep. she had a different angle and uh then you had the guy from i think pennsylvania actually that was like very like straight laced and he's like I don't know I I believe they're out here but you know he wasn't into like the fantasizing of it or anything he was very like straightforward and I was actually just talking to a guy um and he had a different theory of Bigfoot and he said that what if because we were talking about hollow earth and um he said, what if they just live in the cave systems and stuff that we don't venture into and then they pop out from time to time to wander around and, you know, it just, I never thought about that before. So it made me think like, oh yeah, that's actually a good theory. Yeah. yeah I suppose in America you have, what are they called? Like the massive underground cave or something it's called. Like when you look at the actual map of America and where the caves actually are and how far they stretch underground it's just phenomenal like obviously lots of people go missing trying to explore it and a lot of it is just unexplored like yeah it's a legitimate reason and again in the UK it's a similar thing where you can get from city to city underground in abandoned coal mines in old railways that aren't used anymore and in just natural cave formations you can't get across many miles underground that aren't generally humans don't generally go down there because it's all blocked off it's unsafe it's just unexplored so yeah, again, it could explain it in both the UK and America as well. But America does have the mass. Is it called the massive cave system? I'm not it's sure like a, exactly what it's called. I know we have a bunch of different caves. It's got systems. a good hyperbole, I think. Like, I don't think like, it's actually called like massive or something <laughs> like. I'm sure it's it's something like that. But there's like cave systems like all over the states. Like not too far from me, there's Luray Caverns, and there are massive tunnel systems. And, you can actually take tours down there and you can't get to every part but they'll take you to like the main parts and mm. i know in the uh northwest and midwest there's a bunch of cave systems so <laughs> what's your take on bigfoot then what do you think he they, um she is so i think they are leftover hominids so like um you know how you see in magazines or National Geographic or wherever, like, they found, like, Lucy skeleton and then there was, like, Australia Pithocene and all that. I think there's some type of branch of early hominid, and um, they just happen to escape slaughter and they take refuge in cave systems and in the deep woods where people don't really venture and, uh, then of course you have like yeti and they're in like the mountain mountainous regions that there's not a lot of people and south america i'm sure they have in the amazon and stuff like that so 
that's my take mm-hmm. on it. I think they're just left over and the whole alien connection, maybe the aliens are just abducting them and doing tests on them just like they are us and maybe we're both products of alien DNA tampering. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. But if, I think one thing when we did our very first episode actually on Yaoi and we talked about all the different ones like you got the Yerin, big uh, Yeti, Bigfoot, Yaoi, all different ones like China, India, all these different places. And they're all very similar in descriptions, all very similar in behaviour and sort of place where they live. It's always like forest regions or mountain regions. And obviously, so many thousands, millions of years ago, before the continent split, they could have all been sort of together. And obviously, obviously going back a long time, but as the continents have split and come apart, they obviously then evolved into their own sort of sub-species of the same sort of forefather sort of thing and, and it is like they all come back to the same ancestor I think that's the word I'm looking for originally before like the continent split because when you look at reports and from basically from hundreds and hundreds of years ago how did someone in Australia sort of know about Bigfoot in America whereas if it happened today you think oh it was ready on the internet now going to make up a story based on what someone saw in America whereas hundreds and thousands of years ago and two different communities on different parts of the world that don't know the other exists yet but both reporting seeing the same type of creature acting the same way it's not, they've not read it in the newspaper they're just they're having them experiences they are both seeing something independently yeah. of each other so it's got to be something something in it yeah I have a wild theory and uh, it's just my personal theory <laughs> and it might be rubbish but <laughs> like Pangea, like you said, when everything was together, all the land masses. What if, what if all the like pyramids around the world and all that stuff happened during that time, and then the cataclysm happened, and they all spread apart, like you were saying, and uh, that's why there's so much similarities and so many different stories, but um, they're all similar, but in different regions. Of the world it's just you know like i said a crazy theory that i think about yeah because there's a lot of like temples and buildings like specifically like pyramids and like the aztecs have got a certain kind of building and that you can see stuff like that in other um civilizations across the world that couldn't have known about each other like that like ash was talking about it's like how could any of that have all happened and yeah it's it's just as likely, like you said, it all happened at the same time and then it all splits and that's why it's they're apart or there's something in it. But, yeah. yeah, and if you throw like um biblical reference in, like maybe that was part of like the Tower of Babel when they were trying to, you know, build something to God or something and they got uh spread apart in different languages and stuff like that. I don't know. I'm just trying to tie it all together. Yeah, it's it's just such a like a massive rabbit hole. When you think, right, how can all this be? How can it all be linked? It's there's so many ways you can sort of go off and think about. Is it aliens? Is it I don't know re-civilization of the world? We've we've gone extinct and we've been repopulated, and it's just the old stuff and. It's, or the universe was created yesterday and it, it's all, all been implanted in memory we, we'd have no way of knowing mm-hmm. if we weren't all created today yeah yeah. That's... Tom DeLong is going down the hole everything there's no history there's no there's no past there's no present oh, sorry there's no past there's no future all time is happening right now so everything that's ever happened and everything that will ever happen is now so, like you say, Ash, we're just, it is what it is. So, what what do you guys think about, it's becoming very popular now, like the simulation theory, where we're in a simulation. i tell you what, I picked up a shitty character, if that's a... <laughs> <laughs> how, how did I get somebody else to work all the time? <laughs> but, yeah, I don't, I don't see what, like I say, anything seems to be on the table for me now. 
the the more we look into stuff, the less we seem to get closer to the answer. It just seems a little bit further away. Um, I'm up. For- I mean, it's like the pat the patterns in nature, and like now they're getting smaller and smaller with the splitting the atom and the splitting the small atoms and the quantum nano getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Then when they do, you know, they're getting smaller and smaller. When they open it up, so to speak, it's the same sort of pattern as what was there, but just on a minuscule. Can't even think about how small we actually they actually are, but they still have so much inside them, and it's just how how can it be how? Yeah, it's you just, only have to look at know. the um, the James Webb Space Telescope pictures. To, to to try and figure out how small we are in the grand scheme of things and we are pathetically small so going down to that atomic level and like you say there's patterns and everything how is maths a thing maths seems to be the explain um, allows us to work out everything and I, I, yeah it's like a, a code yeah, and then you get like um, there's people that are into like I forget what it's called numerology and stuff like that, and they can find like number patterns in everything, like from like sports betting to like biblical code, and it all like breaks down to math mathematics. <laughs> so weird. Yeah, the the Bible code is is good. Is I've read a couple of books on the Bible code and how people are finding stuff in that. It's just. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, and the, but yeah, how 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 it's another possibility of everything that's happening is we're in a simulation, and we can we can create now like artificial communities, artificial sort of intelligence. It's, it's not too far beyond a step for them to become sort of not self-aware but self-living, and where they're all sort of living a life, even though they're created by us. So like, that's only a little step beyond where we are now. In the fact that we could create us, like humanity, in a microchip. And it's, is that all we are? Could be. Easily could be now. <laughs> that would be pretty sad. Like <laughs> We're just in a big Petri dish. That like, explains Whoever's flat controlling Earth. me needs to step up their game. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, throw some more coins my way. <laughs> <laughs> it is a fun theory to think about though it's like what if we are all just the coded program that's running and maybe not controlled by anybody but just set to run and we're just living out whatever code it is yeah definitely it's, it's, it's a good theory as any other theory I suppose because there's like times in my life that like it feels like it was like preordained to happen like there was no way around doing whatever whatever event it is it's mm-hmm. like it i had a choice i guess but not really it doesn't feel like <laughs> it's almost like it was meant to be regardless yeah so whichever choice like you fixed point in yeah, time. yeah so wherever whichever choice you made was still gonna it was still gonna happen so we, me and ash when we started the podcast we we met through like a mutual appreciation of poker and then since then we've had guests on they live in places where like are down the road from me but they're the same place in america like names of cities and towns and then like we speak to chris and tyler um from dockside media and it turns out they're they're local to you and we've spoken yeah, they're to from my hometown or, yeah. it's just insane and we, we speak to loads of people we're talking about somebody who was recommended to us the other day and he belongs to like the Oxford Paranormal Society in America and Oxford's like 10 minutes from me in the UK and just all these weird things we interviewed a guest and he grew up in the same village that my best friend grew up in and we spent we would have been roughly around the same time in the same village and it's just like loads of weird things happen we have weird experiences, me and Ash, on our recordings. Weird stuff happens. It, 
And I, I said to him the other day, I said something like it, like lo loads of weird stuff happens that we, like we seem to be on a path. So for you just saying that, um, that ties in with what me and Ash were talking about the other day. It was just like a random late night message I sent him whilst uh, high on my prescription painkillers. A lot of coincidences. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's a lot of coincidences. Yeah. Let's just say that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Very strange. Yeah, it's like my podcast. Like, before I did this, I tried to do like a video game website type of thing. And everything just seemed so hard, like, to get it going and do all the work for it and stuff like that. So I gave up on that. And then I was like, I want to do a podcast. And I was thinking, like, what I could talk about. I was like, well, I've always been into, you know, X Files type stuff. So I was like, I'm going to do a podcast about that. And everything just seemed so to flow so easy and everything just kind of like lined up and it's still like snowballing i feel like and it's almost like like i said it's destined to happen and whereas the video game website wasn't meant to happen so that's why i had so much resistance to like get it going it's yeah, just I've, odd it's weird <laughs> i feel you there i've um yeah, I've thought I've had ideas in the past and it's just like everything just seems so difficult when then I met Ash and it's just non stop. We just we just I think we don't even like plan anything. We don't even talk talk to each other, like don't even really even know each other. And then he just messaged me and said, You wanna start a podcast? <laughs> Pretty much that's <laughs> how it was. Like it was. <laughs> two weeks later we had a podcast and now it's like nearly two years and we've two hundred episodes nearly it's just don't even know what's happening yeah. it's just crazy yeah it's weird yeah the synchronicities and like um my fiance and i were talking about how like you could be talking about someone and then they pop up sure enough and like where does that come from because it happens all the time yeah my my daughter keeps talking about manifestations and manifesting stuff and like talking about stuff make, makes it happen so i don't i don't know if i'm quite that far down the line we're believing that but weird weird stuff does seem to happen for definite we were talking with tyler actually from dark side last week about so is there some sort of lost gift that humans have that we've just either through evolution or through other things have sort of lost it where you can connect on a obviously like on a subconscious level with other people like we're talking about like you can sort of feel when someone's staring at you you know you can't see it you're there's some sort of part of you that recognises someone's looking at you. And they're saying that when someone talks about you, your ears burn, these different things. And when you say about thinking about someone and suddenly they call you or they message you, maybe you're thinking of them, so they somehow think of you in return. That message does get to them because you're thinking about them. And there's that gift that humans have, that maybe mediums still have it, but majority of people don't have that anymore. We've not we've lost it or we've closed the third eye or whoever they referred to it and then but that's it's still on some level it's still there so you're thinking about them somehow they picked up on that however many miles away they are I thought oh I'm not, I'm not seeing Jeremiah in a while let's just text him see how he is and it's because you were thinking of them and somehow they've picked up on that on some wavelength somewhere that because obviously all atoms are connected we're getting closer again <clears throat> in science to is it quantum or quarks or whatever it is where you can two atoms not connected they can control all them different I think like 20 feet away so they've got the distance they've got so far or something I don't know where they can connect with nothing I don't know what I'm talking about anymore <laughs> but it could be it's, it's that theory it sounded good um, where it sounded good <laughs> it sounded all, every atom is con every, every atom is connected yeah um, and again like we're built from atoms you get us down to the basic level we're just bits of hydrogen and oxygen and carbon. We're the same as a tree or whatever, literally, basically. Yeah, it's all like energy. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's all energy. So it's some sort of lost gift that we can. We just don't have that gift anymore. If that makes sense. What I just <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I heard about, about um, there's this thing called like the cosmic download where people say that if you like meditate a certain way or um you can like tap into this 
universal knowledge that's out there just floating around and uh they can some that's why they think like some people like nikola tesla and einstein they were able to like tap into that like universal like knowledge and like that's why they drew all those like theories and inventions and stuff like that and it kind of goes into like i don't know i would i used to watch basketball a lot and there was games where and this was when Allen Iverson was in the league, and um, he was a very famous uh, basketball player here in the States. But uh, it was like he couldn't miss the basket. Like, he would score. You'd be like, how the hell did he make that shot? And it was like he was tapped into some higher level of consciousness or something that, like... And then there was nights where he was just cold, like he couldn't hit anything and or couldn't score at all. And it's just a crazy thing to think about yeah definitely definitely it's a crazy world out there (laughs) so if you guys um are there any like dream guests or any topics that you still want to cover or someone you want to talk to like if you could get any guest on who would your pick be good question Hmm. (laughs) so we've had we've had had a few people on. There is one guest that I've always wanted on, but I, I don't really think he certainly nowadays doesn't really fit with with what the podcast is. So I've been a long time sort of follower of the work of David Icke. David Icke is um, well, he it's very difficult to explain David Icke, but. <laughs> Back I in know, the eighties, used to listen to him. Yeah, so he's got a lot of good theories about a lot of stuff, and a lot of weird theories about a lot of weird stuff. Um, but I think he'd be a very interesting guest for anybody who's aware of him. He definitely is a polarizing figure. People either like him or they don't like him. I've got a lot of his books which talk about a lot of coincidences and conspiracy theories, which isn't something we really touch on in our podcast um and it's just fascinating to see his process behind it and he he was talking years ago like 20 years ago about um high profile pedophiles in the uk and politicians and um celebrities and everybody was saying that's rubbish that's rubbish and now we've got this thing called operation yew tree in the uk where all these top celebrities from like the 60s 70s and 80s um are all tumbling because they've all been found that they've been touching kids or acting inappropriately with minors um, back in the early days of TV Um, and all the stuff he said about in those books is all like true and he's like if it was ever false why are people not suing me because they they don't want the truth to come out so he's a guest I'd really like to talk to however I don't think we'd ever get him and be yeah it's not <laughs> not really doesn't fit in with the podcast anymore that's a long story long well <laughs> if, if i ever get him on as a guest i'll have you on as co-host <laughs> yeah yeah definitely i'd love to chat to him i've been fascinated by his work and he, he covers all like the aliens reptilians energy uh conspiracies all that kind of stuff so it's a good stuff but he's got some way out theories that don't necessarily agree yeah because he used to do he used to do um like six eight hour like uh conference things at the wembley stadium yeah sold out stuff it's just like insane you get more people coming to him than some football teams in the uk soccer teams in the states but yeah he's one of the first ones i listened to when i started like looking into you know fringe stuff same (laughs) conspiracies yeah same same and he was ridiculed for a long time um, due to the way that the press sort of focused on the joke side of him being like, saying he's like the son of God and all this kind of stuff. And he was just ridiculed. But um, yeah, very polarizing figure. Um, how about you, Ash? Sorry, I went on quite a bit there. <laughs> <laughs> so, so for me, I guess, I mean, I'm a, a pop punk emo boy at heart. And I grew up listening to like Blink-182 and Green Day and all types of bands. 
and Tom DeLonge, I mean, still listen to Blink-182, Tom's not part of them anymore, the different singer, but Tom DeLonge then obviously went into TGSA, and that's like my two loves just combined in Tom, <laughs> uh, and the work he's done and everything that sort of, I mean, yeah, Tom DeLonge would just be, because well, he, he's, I mean, he's always gone for it, alien, even like the early days of Blink-182 when he was still a teenager, and in interviews he's talking about crash retrievals and bodies and aliens and everything he's, he's been there his whole life and it's obviously now he's had the money and the time for the last few years he's left the music well did leave the music and then went into UFOs which why why wouldn't you want to do that he had the money and the time to do it and then obviously now he's gone back into music a bit more now with Angels and Airways but yeah Tom DeLong just uh, he's, he's, he, he knows a lot of stuff as well he knows a lot of high profile people a lot of stuff he's not said that he knows that he, t- he can't talk about and stuff and yeah just talk to him would be a dream a dream come true yeah, he's supposed to play in, in uh, Manchester near me in March I'm gonna go gonna, I'm gonna go with a sign saying like thank you for TGSA and everything and try and see like so as I I'm one of those that I'll wait for five hours after a gig for, the, for them to come out and to see him and stuff and I'll be there I'd wait to try and, uh, to see him <laughs> cancelled in the end um, but yeah Tom DeLong would be I've got I've got another one. Got another okay. one. It would never happen. Arthur C. Clark. So Arthur C. Clark is so he was the inventor of the communication satellite. He designed it back in wherever. He he moved he was an English guy, moved out to Sri Lanka and sort of retired and done all this stuff. But he had a program called Arthur C. Clark's World of Strange Mysteries, and that is the program that got me into this whole journey when I was younger there was a a story about a poltergeist um, case and it freaked me out completely Um, and it was always talking about stigmata and crystal skulls and all this kind of thing and that was the the one part where I thought actually this stuff's really fascinating and that's started taking me on he's long time dead now I think he was in his 90s when he died but that would be one because that would be my proper fanboy moment I think (laughs) how about you Jeremiah who's your ideal guest who would you be looking for oh man um it'd probably be hard to get them on but maybe not I don't know um well the episode airing on Monday tomorrow is one of my dream guests L.A. Marzulli I just like the guy he's very passionate he's got a different take on the whole alien and UFO thing. It's not for everyone because he's more religious based. So he's more on the aliens or demons and stuff like that. But he has gone a long time trying to uncover like giant skeletons and elongated skulls and uh, stuff to back up his claim. And so that was one of my dream guests. But the other one that I haven't done yet and I'll I'll try to reach out to him, maybe. Who knows? But uh, Graham Hancock, uh, I don't know if you guys know him. He's from UK, too. Yeah, it's yeah, Chariot of the Gods. Yep. Is it? Yeah. Oh, no, that was Van Daniken. Graham Hancock's the one who's always on Joe Rogan for, like, ayahuasca, and he wrote oh. um, Fingerprints of the Gods, I think. That, I think yeah, that's the one. yeah, where he talks about the pyramids and all that. So, yeah, he's yeah. one of my dream guest to track down and <laughs> I, I really want to talk to him because he's got so much to talk about and I like his uh, works as well just the um, not just the ayahuasca side but like the ancient past and forgotten civilizations and all that stuff that he talks about <laughs> that's cool yeah just fire him a message you know he might be on so it takes, online it? at that time and it pops up yeah you never know that's how i think we got lucky with some of our guests they just sort of they read the message at the right time bam let's do the interview oh i actually had another dream guest um i emailed him his name's michael tellinger and he's from south africa and he um he actually responded to me and said i can't do it right now cuz i'm starting this one small town i guess he's building a like a small town in south africa and um he's like con contact me back in october and i'll come on so i was like sweet so yeah that's cool 
I'll reach out to him again in October, and that'll be another dream guest off the list. Awesome. That's cool. Yeah, sometimes it just needs that one one message, and it all changes. Yeah, if you hit them at the right time. and Exactly. I've learned to, like, try to reach out to people when they're, like, not doing any type of tours or uh, anything like that. And sometimes they'll be like, sorry, I can't do it. Or sometimes they'll be like, reach out to me in a few months or whatever. But <laughs> I think a lot of people are willing to, to talk and share their experience. <laughs> Definitely. And I think now, because the technology allows us to do it, they don't need to go anywhere. They can just sit in their bedroom or wherever and just speak into a device. They don't necessarily have to do anything. I think that, that definitely opens up guests a lot more. Um, oh, yeah, for makes sure. Makes it easy for people, for definite. So um, for the audience, where can they find you, reach out to you? I'll let you plug all your stuff. <laughs> Over to you, Ash. Well, the podcast is Pursuit of the Paranormal podcast. You can find it on Spotify, Apple, anywhere you listen to your podcast. All our links are on our link tree, which is linktree.com forward slash pursuit of the paranormal. You've got our buy me coffee on there, our website. You can listen to the show on there, you can buy our merch on there. We do two episodes a week at least, every Saturday, every Tuesday. Different topics. We're increasing that to three episodes weekly very soon. This is hard work. We have a TikTok, Pursuit of the Paranormal podcast, which we are sort of concentrating on at the minute, trying to get a younger a younger crowd involved. Uh, yeah, just Pursuit of the Paranormal on Facebook, on Instagram, Twitter. Just search Pursuit of the Paranormal yeah. and you'll find us. All right. Well, thank you guys for coming on and talking with us. And we went down a lot of different rabbit holes, but it was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah, thanks for having us on. Yeah, good to see you again. Yeah, definitely.